Hi there, my name is Alan Lamont. This video is an explanation of why I do believe that Pope Francis is the Black Pope, the superior Jesuit general, called by Jesuits the Father General. The general of the Jesuits is elected for life, but over the last few decades we have saw two generals resign. We have uh, Pedro Ruppi resigned before Hans Kovenbach was positioned as the Black Pope. Then he resigned in 2008 for Father Adalpo Nicholas uh, from Spain to be elected as the Superior General of the Society of Jesus by the 35th Congregation of the Jesuit Curie in Rome. Now if you go on the Jesuit website called the Jesuit Curie in Rome I'll put this page on so you can see it now. It's called the House of the Superior General. And on the left there at the bottom you will see an article for Pope Francis. On the 31st of July 2013 quote it was historical moment for all Jesuits in Italy and around the world. Now why was it historic? I'll explain that but let me uh, continue this quotation. It was a historical moment for all Jesuits in Italy and around the world to have Pope Francis presiding over the feast day mass of St. Agnitus of Loyola. The spectacular view of more than 200 Jesuits from Italy along with Father General and his council members concelebrating with the Pope and over 600 religious and lay collaborators participating in this event. Now, we have today a very unusual, very unusual situation. We've entered a time that we've never entered before in regard to the Jesuit order. Now, going back to 2008, Peter Hans Kovenbach was the Jesuit general of the Jesuit order. He was the superior general of the Society of Jesus. He resigned supposedly according to reasons of ill health. And then Father Adalpo Nicholas Patchen was positioned to be the Superior General of the Jesuits. That's in 2008. And so with everyone looking at the Jesuits over the last few years exposing the fact that they do control the New World Order. They're behind the Vatican, they're behind the One World Government, they're behind all of these interlocking groups that govern the New World Order. It's the Jesuits that have global governance. They control the One World Government. And the Jesuits realized that eventually people would be aware of this because they're positioning their presidents and prime ministers out for all to see and people will eventually realize that they're all Jesuit alumni, they all come from Jesuit universities, they're all under the power of the Pope of Rome, they're all Vatican Knights. Really what I'm saying is this, eventually people would realize that really the Jesuits do control all governments, they have complete control over the governments of the earth because I mean even look at the European Union look at Hermann von Rumpy you know he's Jesuit trained from a Jesuit alumni university this is how the Jesuits have the power they do is through education and so eventually they would position a Pope of Rome to be a Jesuit to be a high Jesuit Pope Francis, uh, obviously Bagaglio, was a high Jesuit provincial from Argentina. Okay, let me go back to Hans Kovenbach and let me explain this revelation to you. But I have to share that just to lay a foundation for this message. Now, if you look into Hans Kovenbach, he was positioned by Pedro Arupi, the Jesuit general. And the Jesuits are known as the company. Okay, they're called Jesuits by Protestants, but really they are the company. Not of Jesus, but just they're the company. They are Knights of the Virgin, the Knights Templars. The Knights Templars were not destroyed. Peter Hans Kornbach resigned in 2008. And 
Adolfo Nicholas was positioned to be the Black Pope. So everyone exposing the Jesuits, everyone exposing the Black Pope in the anti-Vatican movement, they all believed that Adolfo Nicholas was the Jesuit general. Officially, he was positioned. I believe that myself. I brought that revelation out for over two years, you know. But then something unusual happened. We had... The Pope of Rome, Pope Benedict, the White Pope, resigned in March. And we had Pope Francis positioned as a high Jesuit provincial over the whole of South America to be the sovereign pontiff, to be the Bishop of Rome, to be the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church Universal. So from 2008 to 2013, what we have is we have a black Pope come back resign. A Dabo Nicholas position, we have a white Pope resign, and we have a Jesuit high provincial positioned as the Pope of Rome. You see, so officially, all that people are going to do is look at Adolfo Nicholas. And of course, he is a high Jesuit on the Jesuit council, but he is not the black Pope. He was merely brought out and brought forth to bring diversion away from the fact that for the first time in history, the Jesuits have a black pope who has become the white pope. That's what's happened. I am 100% convinced of that. And the more that I dig into this revelation, the more convinced I am every day of it. This is what's happened. This is what the Jesuits have done. And they always work in harmony. That's how they work when they operate this way. That's their modus operandi. They always work together in harmony. That's how you know that this is a work of the Jesuits. <laughs> Pope Francis being positioned. He's not just a high Jesuit provincial. No, he's not. He came into the Jesuit order in 1953 and he was uh, overseen by Pedro Ruppi and he worked with Hans Kolbenbach on the Jesuit Curia in Rome from the Church of the Jesuit. What you're looking at in this picture here as you're looking at Adolfo Nicholas in subordination. Now that is not just, you know, staged in that sense. That's real. You're looking at Adolfo Nicholas, who is subordinate to his general, who is Pope Francis. And we see here in these pictures that Father Adolfo Nicholas is not wearing his... Jesuit general garments the way that he normally does because he's standing before the general he's dressed like an ordinary provincial he's dressed as an ordinary high Jesuit on the Jesuit curia on the Jesuit high council because that's all he is I believe he governs the curia but he's not the general of the company and if Jesuits are listening to this, you'll understand what I'm saying when I say harmony. This is the way the Jesuits work. You have a black pope resigned, coming back. You have a Davo Nicholas positioned in the middle of this operation so that everyone officially sees him as the superior Jesuit general. So that when Pope Benedict resigns, suddenly no one was prepared for that. And then we have... Pope Francis being ordained as the Pope of Rome. So this is the way the Jesuits work. Always in deception. Always in diversion. That's how they work. Okay. Now I've had to explain that. And I'm not going to make this a long video. But I felt responsible to really explain that. Because sometimes in the videos that I'm bringing out. I don't go into it a lot. And I have to remember that a lot of people don't have this revelation. And uh it's only really just really analyzing this a couple of months ago that I realized exactly what the Jesuit Curia have done here. <laughs> and it's very shrewd and it's very devious, but this is what they've done. They've positioned a black pup to be the head of the Jesuits and also to govern the Vatican as the white pup. It's never happened before. 
But the only way they could do it, this is the only way they could do it, is to have Hans Kornbach resign. And he chose Adolfo Nicholas to be put forth as diversion. So that when Pope Francis becomes the Pope of Rome, no one would know that he's the Black Pope. No one would suspect that he's the Jesuit general because Adolfo Nicholas is the general. But you see the harmony here. The harmony. That's the key to understanding this. The harmony. Okay. So we have a Black Pope today who is the superior general of the Jesuits. Let me bring a conclusion. The Jesuits of Rome do control the world. I'm not going to go deep into that, that's in all of my other work. But the Jesuits do control the world. They control every government. They control the monarchies. They control the presidents, the prime ministers, the heads of state. Because they're all graduated from Jesuit universities. They're all alumni. Graduates. That's the only way that you're given power at the top. No other way. No other way. I'm not saying they're high Jesuits. It takes 30 to 40 years to be a Jesuit that has power in this command structure. Or, let me rephrase that, in this chain of command. Because it is an army. It's a military order. They're the soldiers of Loyola. It's an army. And when you read the Jesuit oath, and it is the real oath of induction, or what's known as the fourth vow, or extreme oath of induction. That's where you see the real revelation of the New World Order. To overthrow governments. To have a one world government where all nations are subordinate to the Pope. But here we have the Pope of Rome, Pope Francis, out in the open now. He's not just a high Jesuit provincial. So every time you have, say, Obama or Herman von Rompuy or Angela Merkel or any of these world leaders when they come to the Vatican and they bow in subordination to the Pope they're not bowing just to a Jesuit provincial they're actually shown open subordination to the black Pope he's ruled the governments covertly secretly for the last couple of hundred years you know this is a secret alliance this is a secret covenant between the monarchies uh, it's also known as the Holy Alliance that's another name for it so the monarchies the Catholic bloodline the Catholic sovereigns they're already under the power of the Black Pope they have been for hundreds of years and the Jesuits will put to death and assassinate any president any monarch anyone any head of state any politician that defies Rome. You see the Jesuits worked through the popes of Rome for hundreds of years in order to control the governments of the earth and now they have complete control the black pope is coming forth as the white pope. This is it's obvious what's happened. At some point they were going to do this. This is the end game. It's obvious. Do you think the black pope is always going to be in the shadows? Of course he controls all governments covertly and secretly but do you think he's always going to be in that position? Of course not. Ultimately, he's going to come forth as the Black Pope. They destroyed the power of the papacy generations ago. The last Pope to resist them was Pope John Paul I, and he was not killed because of a P2 Masonic scandal. Don't believe that by Jesuit coadjutor David Yollop. No, they were killed by the Society of Jesus because he wanted to bring restraints upon the Jesuits. He wanted to limit the power of the general and for that once the Jesuits realized that he was put to death very quickly after 30 days conclusion uh, if you want to ask questions go ahead leave comments it's uh, something that's very deep you know what we're talking about is very deep and uh, but you know there's multi levels to this new world order conspiracy but what I'm revealing to you now is the truth. I've spent three years uh, sometimes just working day after day after day after day to dig into this conspiracy. And I respect other researchers that I've had contact with, like Eric John Phelps and Craig Oxley. And, you know, we'll all differ on different issues. But the truth of the matter is the Black Pope 
is the one that controls the world. He controls all the Vatican knighthoods, he controls the papal bloodlines of Italy, and they have more power than the Rothschilds. But, okay, thank you for watching the video, and as always, all roads lead to Rome.